For years, Thailand's fishing industry has been profiting from the misery of some of the most persecuted people on earth. All while feeding the growth of a brutal transnational people trafficking industry. This is the story of how one of the world's largest export industries, supplying seafood to millions of us around the world, is tainted by the systematic exploitation of the Rohingya people. In 2014, The Guardian revealed how the prawns on your plate were produced by Cambodian and Burmese slave labour in the Thai fishing industry. One year on, we found Rohingya survivors who had also spent years enslaved on Thai fishing boats after being sold from a network of jungle trafficking camps. And we also discovered fishermen increasingly turning from fishing to human trafficking as their industry faces crisis. Hundreds of thousands of Rohingya men, women and children have fled state-sanctioned violence in Burma since 2012, forced to take to the seas in a desperate attempt to reach the relative safety of Malaysia. A vast industry has emerged to exploit this misery. Many of those migrants attempting the crossing will end up being held to ransom by human traffickers. <laughs> They're tortured, they're beaten, uh, they are deprived of adequate food, deprived of adequate shelter. Survivors told us that rape and sexual violence were an everyday reality. Some of those who couldn't pay were held in the camps for years. Others were sold. When men or boys are unable to pay the traffickers to secure their freedom, they, in many cases, are sold to fishing boats where they're used as slave labor. The sales were arranged by brokers who bought and sold people from the camps to the boats. เอ่อเราก็โทรตอบเราก็โทรตอบไปทีนึงถ้ามีเขาก็ส่งมาอืมก็เก่าพวกนั้นน่ะรวมมาด้วยกันอืมพอมาอยู่เนี่ยประมา
तो ये आरा लोगिये बुर्जुगुरी लोजे याद है इतरा गैकारिगो लोजे बाद है सोंगला लोगिये सोंगला तो ऐसा आरा शिव तुली लोजे रे आरा रे हमगरा दे दो जमारे हंगुजी आरा सारी बसर मुला तो दो जमार हंगुजे तब बुशी भी जाते नोबले गए this was the same port identified by the Guardian's 2014 investigation into slavery in the supply chain of farm shrimp sold in supermarkets across the world. And this trade in vulnerable Rohingyas has only been possible with the collusion of the authorities. This is a situation in the Thai fishing sector specifically uh, that's been going on since the 90s at least, as far as we can tell. Um, it has involved the complicity and, in some cases, the direct involvement of Thai officials. Thai officials have essentially um, sold or in some cases just handed over thousands upon thousands of people to human trafficking syndicates. In May 2015, mass graves containing the remains of Rohingya refugees were uncovered. This forced the Thai military government to acknowledge the existence of a trade which has been operating uninterrupted for years. Prime Minister General Prayat Chanucha set a deadline of 10 days to find the remaining camps and bring the trafficking operations to a halt. High profile arrests followed, including a three star military general who pleaded not guilty to multiple charges. The Thai government now insists that its trafficking problem is over. <laughs> This claim is disputed by human rights groups. We think that the investigations that have taken place in Thailand so far have not even scratched the surface. We actually believe there are probably many more camps that have not yet been uncovered, at least on the Thai side of the border. I guess no more migrants. For a long time, the sad, sad fact of the matter was that the only people who wanted the Rohingya were the brokers and the traffickers. The Thai government is also facing pressure to tackle its other human trafficking problem, slave labour in its fishing industry. It has pushed through a series of reforms aimed at shutting down illegal practices, including forced labour. The cost of these reforms do not sit well with the boat owners, who for years have relied on cheap migrant labour to survive. As the industry has evolved across the last several decades, the sad truth is forced labour has become fundamental to the economic logic of the Thai seafood sector. Rapid, unregulated growth and decades of overfishing have already left the industry on the brink of a catastrophe. You saw a very significant decrease in catch rates across the last several decades. That means ships have to spend 25 plus times more time at sea to catch the same amount of fish. And as a result, some ship captains have been forced either out of the fishing sector or to go into other businesses because fishing is no longer economically viable. And now the industry is facing mounting pressure from vital trade partners in Europe and the US. The EU has threatened to ban Thai fishing imports, which is a multi-billion dollar industry. So Thailand would stand to lose billions of dollars in sales to the EU if it doesn't clean up its fishing sector soon. If you suddenly strip out forced labor, uh, an industry can, can fall apart, and maybe it should. In Renong in Western Thailand, we found fishermen increasingly turning to another line of business. Boat owners told us that they are converting their boats to carry people instead of fish. Oh, I'm 
ก็ได้เงินเยอะกว่าเลยถ้าทำทีหนึ่งมันได้เยอะอ่ะมันเอาพูดง่ายผมก็อยากได้เงินอ่ะ One of the boat owners also told us that people generate three times more money than fish. He says he knows of at least 10 local boats. Who are transporting around 12,000 Rohingya migrants a month? These 12,000 migrants could generate up to 24 million dollars in ransom payments. As boat owners become more involved with the traffickers' operations, survivors say there has been a grim evolution in this trade of people. As their jungle camps are shut down, trafficking syndicates are reportedly taking their operations offshore to cargo ships acting as holding pens for thousands of Rohingyas, facilitated by Thai fishing boats. One woman, now safe in Malaysia, told us how the smuggling boat she was travelling on was hijacked by armed men as they made their way from Burma across the open sea. And how the half my arm marta dunwar, tinwar maika tinwar. And nanti ani baato guli mari mari. Apna na matis no lo disa ho. They were taken to a large six-story ship with more than 2,000 people on board. The bure ka na re isi gor dilak guri banana je de. Kya mil isi gor dilak kala banana je hole itara kulo tulile itara daago de itara lai. Manse a jaru pura karay hole masal puti na itara dahat guru guru ho dhon dhon dorilya ne. She describes a hellish existence on the ship. She went on to describe how fishing boats are acting as lookouts for the traffickers and how they would also take the dead bodies away. In recent months, governments across Southeast Asia have come under intense pressure to respond to human trafficking in the region. Yet state policies of discrimination against the Rohingya by these same governments are continuing. As long as that's happening, people are going to flee their homes and take to the seas. And Thailand's fishing and trafficking industries will continue to feed off each other. This is the story of globalized slavery. The story of how giant international supermarkets are selling prawns fed by slave labor. Cheap for us to buy, the human cost of their production is unimaginable.